When it comes to your superstardom, there's so many ways to walk into the industry and make your mark and it doesn't solely have to lie on your vocal ability. Like we've seen with JLo who started off as a dancer, being in numerous music videos and background dancing on hit shows like In Living Color. She made the easy connections and had the look that was easy for her to step into the singing route. And in a sense, it was the same route that Danny Lay took. Although she was releasing covers on YouTube before she did the big move, she really originally started off as a choreographer. Danny Lay took the leap of faith and moved from her hometown of Miami, Florida to LA at just 16 years old with the aspirations of breaking into the industry. In just two years, she got her big break by directing, starring, and choreographing a music video for none other than The Prince. She was contacted by Prince's team who told her that Prince was interested in her and to send a video of her dancing to solidify her role. I've anything before. I've only been on camera. Well, basically I got an email from Nandy and Mayor McLean and they contacted me and said that Prince wants me to submit a video, a choreography video. He loved the submission and then from there he asked me to write a treatment for the video, um, direct the video and just basically make the video happen. So that's kind of how it went about. I wrote the treatment and he loved it and then from there he wanted it really big in the dance industry so from there I just had auditions and basically just did this video on my own I'm like I'm 18 years old and he gave me full control her work on the video and taking creative control helped Danny Lay develop a great business relationship and friendship with Prince which led him to want to mentor her in order to, for her to excel in her growing career even allowing her to control his Instagram their platonic relationship was growing until his sudden death in 2016, but that didn't stop her growth in the industry. Her dancing skills have gotten her noticed by a lot of A-listers including Farewell Williams, Daddy Yankee, and Nelly Furtado, and has even gotten her a place on tour with J. Cole and Megan Trainor. But nothing will ever hit more than a Drake co-sign as we all know, and that's exactly what happened. She did the In My Feelings challenge and caught the attention of Drake and they ended up meeting during his American tour, but Danny Lay Dreams didn't end with dance alone. She had a burning desire to create music that would transcend and connect with people on a fun level. With a voice that was captivating with up-tempo beats, she began her journey towards becoming a multi-talented artist. In 2018, the plan dropped and Danny Lay unleashed her breakout hit single, Lil BB. With its infectious beats and chill lyrics, the song quickly became a viral sensation, propelling Danny Lay into the spotlight. Fans all over the internet were captivated by her unique blend of R&B, hip-hop, and pop influences. But more so how infectious the hook was for social media platforms like TikTok and Instagram. It's a perfect dance song and it also caught the attention of Lil Baby as he hopped on a remix and further gave Danny Lay some shine. Although Lil BB is a hit, it doesn't compare to her best-selling and most notable song to date on the same album, Easy. It helped her journey to become the rising star of the year, as the song was infectious and had rhythm and a catchy chorus. The song is a complete vibe, like smoke a blunt and chill type of vibe, and it got the attention from another star. I woke up Chris Breezy. Oh my god, I'm the man. Chris Brown. Now, this remix, whether you don't like Danny or don't like Chris, you can't lie. The song is a bop and is undeniably likable and curated a load of TikTok dances, as we all know how much TikTok elevates a song to superstardom. But as Danny Lay continued to make moves in the industry, she then stumbled upon the baby along the way. Her being with the baby definitely attributed to her downfall. Be careful with the guys you end up with or decide to play around with, because although it's her doing, the baby did play a helping hand. In September of 2019, Danny Lay and the baby started dating and it was really an on and off ordeal, but Danny Lay was stuck in the honeymoon phase of the relationship. If you don't know, the honeymoon phase can really be the best part of the relationship, but it's the beginning stages where you're infatuated with the person. The most glamorous parts of a relationship where you begin discovering each other, and the fact that they were both at the peak of their careers, them getting together was something that felt right at the moment. They were collabing with each other on projects with Danny Lay, choreographing the music video for his song Bop, and the baby dropping a feature on her song Levi High. But we all know dealing with a rapper in the peak of his career meant there's a chance that he's being unfaithful, obviously, which put a continuous stain on their relationship. It was toxic. Mm -hmm. You know, we had our really good times. and we I was going to say, it doesn't start ever start toxic. No, we were like this in the beginning. Like, we were in love. Like, that honeymoon phase, like, you know, it was really good. We both were 
kind of at our peak of our careers too. Like I had Rolling Loud, he had Rolling Loud the next day. Like it was just always like, we were always both so busy. Mm -hmm. I had Fashion Week, like it was intriguing for both of us to be like, you know, doing good and like yeah. we would be supporting each other. So it was good. And then of course he had his little mess ups and stuff. So we'd break up for a month and then get back together mm -hmm. and then Again, we break up. We broke up a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> there was a lot of on and offs going on. But during that time, I definitely wasn't his side piece, um, and he knows that too. Mm -hmm. But I felt like. They were continuously being photographed together, posting each other, doing the cute little dance challenges. He was spoiling her on her birthday. They were definitely together. But the thing about rappers and their BMs, they're never actually done, especially since they were together during his come up. All of the baby's fans know about Mimi. Everybody know about Mimi. Because she was actually one of the few rappers. So when fans found out about her during his come up, it did help his image. The image of him showing love to black women elevated his status with the black audience and he played into that. But he was also playing both sides in this love triangle. Even though the baby referenced Danny in his new song Eight Figures as his Dominican boo thing, Danny confirmed their relationship in December. She and Mimi both did not like each other and they would go back and forth on social media. Even before there was confirmation that her and the baby were in a relationship. Danny and Mimi were both in a lover's quarrel. They were both basically in a rotation with the baby, depending on what was going on in their individual relationship with the baby. He constantly went back and forth and it inevitably caused problems between Danny and Mimi. Cause Danny was playing side chick while the baby was actually with Mimi. But once Mimi and the baby really called it quits, he devoted his attention to Danny. So all the tension between them sparked competition in Danny, which made her release a colorist song called Yellow Bone. The song is trash caca poo poo, but Danny was really feeling herself despite Mimi. The thing about the song is that Danny is not considered light skin or yellow bone because she is a white Latina Dominican with parents to match. She isn't black, but her physical aesthetics allows her to feel like she has superiority to someone like Mimi who is full black and brown. She did the song out of spite and had Dum Dum Baby in her comments giving her the co-sign, but in all reality, the song is the worst thing that happened to her career. The case of Danny Lay lies in her insecurity and competitive nature. I don't think Danny thinks she's ugly, but she definitely had feelings of being better than Mimi. Y'all remember when B. Simone showed her insecure roots online and did a whole video rant on how she understood why the baby wanted Danny instead of her because she was the spicy, sexy Latina? Um beautiful she's latin latin bitches already have the upper hand bitches speak two languages and fucking spiciness is in your blood that's not fair okay chili peppers chili peppers bitch like latin bitches are they come out the vagina sexy like how are you sexy at two bitch <laughs> you're a fucking infant why do you look why are you walking around in diapers sexy <laughs> i'm to grow into my sexiness bitch i'm still working on it <laughs> Damn. And that's why we're going to get something to eat and I go to Royal Canyon. Just let me know. I just want to. What I'm saying is. For clarification. Let's, just, here's the clarification. Okay, okay. Danny looks great. Okay. Her body is toned. She's a dancer. She already has the upper hand. I didn't grow up in athletic and dancing. So what I'm saying, I'm yeah. already behind. I'm 30. She's in her early 20s. Mm -hmm. I already have a disadvantage. <laughs> <laughs> My metabolism <laughs> is slowing the fuck down <laughs> as we speak. <laughs> fighting for this nigga no more. I'm not disrespecting their relationship. She's bomb as fuck. Uh, Hilarious. Are you not ashamed of yourself? Are you not embarrassed? This is really embarrassing. B. Simone really went on this whole entire rant and wasn't embarrassed. You have a black woman boasting about you and miss her own demise in terms of likeness because of a man that y'all both want. Then you have this song that you thought was okay because of the type of light skin yellow bone lyrics that has been embedded in rap lyrics since forever. And the baby himself co-signed the song. Danny thought she was the shit. She thought her shit didn't stink. So this song was in response to her playing into the black girl image, something that she's not, in order to tear down Mimi because I guess she's considered a preference. And then you want the one up on his baby mom to make you feel better danny got dragged from the tip of her toes to the limp in her curls people weren't having it because at the end of the day your fans are predominantly poc so it wasn't just offensive to mimi but the people that stream your music 
and of course her response was tone deaf her response was basically saying she making music for the light-skinned baddies and the people are being too sensitive so her apology wasn't an apology until the backlash became too much and then she released this video danny lay and i just wanted to address what's going on with me right now um i think it's super important because i definitely feel super misunderstood and you know my song yellow bone is what he won't um i think people twist it into thinking like I'm trying to bash another woman, another skin tone. Like, that was never my intention. I wasn't brought up like that. I never looked at my skin as a privilege. I never looked at me as I'm better than somebody because of my skin tone. Nah, like, I see brown skinned women flaunt their skin all the time in music. Like, why can't I talk about mine? If you look at me, I'm light skinned. I'm a yellow bone. In my opinion, that's just what I am. So it's like, it wasn't something that I looked at so deeply, which I can see why people will take it deeply. So I understand and I'm sorry that. I wasn't sensitive to the topic when I wrote my comment, like, why are you guys taking it so personal? Because it can be a personal thing to certain people because colorism is a real thing. So I do get it, but I'm not that. <laughs> I'm not a colorist. I'm not a racist. I date a whole chocolate man. I have beautiful dark skin friends, like, and skin isn't something I even see. Like, it's not something that I look at, like, you know, so I'm sorry. Again, if I offended people who are truly offended, I'm sorry. And yeah, I'm gonna just keep grinding, keep doing me. Keep and then she gave a basic apology that everyone gives regarding colorism and racism. It's always the same response. This did take a hit at Danny's public career. And the most unfortunate thing about this song was that they ended up breaking up soon after. A week before V-Day, the baby indirectly announced he was single by making an Instagram post about flying a lucky fan out for Valentine's Day. Then Danny went to the doctors to get on birth control and found out she was pregnant. Pretty funny story. I'll tell you guys. So I was going to the doctors to get on birth control and I found out I was pregnant. I was like, oh, wow. Cool. <laughs> so yeah, I'm like, damn, interesting. Whoa. Hello. You went to go get on birth control and found pregnancy instead? Oh my gosh. Her being pregnant with his child did not stop the baby from being the baby. He left her when she was pregnant and was on and off for her the whole entire pregnancy. Like a true degenerate. So in August of 2021, Danny gave birth to her gorgeous baby girl, Valor. Then three months later, the baby decides to go on live and publicly kick Danny and her baby out of his condo at 3 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, yeah, you want to record me talking about shut the fuck up. I gotta record you for my sake. Yeah, you need to break that man down. Get your phone. Let me close it for you. Baby, the first time. Yeah, this with you. No, no, no. Go with your move, crazy girl. No, you started your shit. Tell him, where's this stupid ass guy? Where's he at? Where's he at? Where's he at? Where's he at? Yeah, whatever. He want to call the fucking cop? Yeah, whatever. No, I don't need to tell you nothing. Nah, you good. You can talk to him because he want to call you guys. Go ahead. Go ahead. Nah, go ahead. Ain't nobody need to talk to nothing. Go ahead. Go ahead. You just want to hang out. Yeah, whatever. Ass. Bitch ass. Bitch ass. Bitch ass. It's all good. It's all good. To, yeah. I ain't never addressed no shit. I ain't never addressed nothing before because I always was like, nah, let me not talk to the internet because the internet is always going to make their own story up. Whatever the fuck. They're going to grab a little piece and put whatever story they want together. But nah. How, how I've been living here for the past three months at his house, at his penthouse, back and forth, here and there, since my baby was born. And then all of a sudden, I cook for this night. He want to come to the crib. I am sleeping in his bed talking about, you need to go. The f You mean I need to go to a five-star hotel? Do it. Do it. The f Ain't nobody leaving. And of course, shit escalated. And they want to put up a statement talking about, oh, it saddens me that I have a queen to raise. F you. You ain't even been here this whole f***ing time that I've had this child. F you. You want to give cute little conversations talking about you a good ass dad? You. F you. F you. You a f***ing coward. You a f***ing coward. You a f***ing coward. God damn, bro. And it's unfortunate that shit's on the f***ing internet because things got very hostile and eventually he called the cops on her to get her out of his place. The whole situation was an entire mess. But to kick Danny out is, okay, you're gonna kick Danny out, but you're gonna kick the baby out too? If she was supposedly beating and hitting him like he proclaimed, then you should have just asked her to leave and he cared for the child till things calmed down. But you're gonna tell her to take the baby with her? Oh, that's nasty. That's nasty work. On top of the backlash the baby already receives in the public eye, this caused even more backlash. The baby has showed a lot of questionable behavior as is, in terms of him punching a black woman at one of his concerts, and his online antics, people were beginning to question not him as an artist, but him as a person. So when this situation happened, it began to show the type of man the baby is, and it wasn't a good look. 
For Danny, this was a moment of vulnerability. Her baby was still fresh from the womb. I'm not sure if the situation was that serious for the baby to actually go as far as to kick her out and record her in the process, but just imagine what something like that does to your mental, especially by the father of your child. Danny Lay is far from innocent, but she did not deserve this type of treatment. The baby then went online and decided to publicly humiliate her. He went online basically saying she was a side chick and they were not together and they were in a fictional relationship. Oh man, I got to the L. First of all, me and Danny Lay is not together. Do I act like we're together? No. Do I make it openly clear that we're not together? Yes. We are not going steady. Have not been, that's not what's going on. You know what I'm saying? First and foremost. This is, this, is my, this is my reality. This is such a cap ass man. This is my reality. This is so such look. a cap ass man. He wants to fuck me and fuck his baby mother and fuck all these Charlotte hoes and fuck all these shit. And me, I'll be okay with that, guys. And me, come back and live Can here and stay me? in this fucking house me? with our child. I don't want you to stay. I've been okay. begging you yeah, to leave. Yeah, no, you're trying to pick me out. This is one of them real, this one of them real movies, yeah. man. Y'all look, look tune, tune in <laughs> and see what we're dealing with. Like, started really cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. Real life, man. I'm not going. He publicly humiliated Danny, gaslighted her, and gave her an assault charge all within 24 hours. I don't think Danny is as delusional as the baby was really trying to make her seem. I mean, I'm pretty sure he was telling her that I miss yous and the comebacks, but we all know guys can be like that. Girls too. We have all stumbled upon at least one person that has gaslighted us into liking them and giving us the affection and love, and then turn around and say, oh, it was nothing. Danny is a case of what many people do when they lose themselves in a relationship with a man that doesn't have the proper moral values. She was way more invested in a relationship with the baby than the baby was with her and she lost herself. After all this went down, it left a bad taste in people's mouth including Danny's brother who has a problem with the way the baby was treating her publicly. This nigga want to call the cops on my sis. This nigga want to disrespect my sister online for the world to see disrespect my family and i'm saying this don't even got nothing to do with my sister no more bro this got to do with me and you you feel me because you missed a tough guy over here beating up bitches knocking little 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 guys out here and there you know what i'm saying you're not gonna do that to me first off so this is what brandon basically called out the baby and asked to fight him in her honor and that's exactly what happened it just didn't necessarily work out in his favor yeah, it went left real fast. The baby and Brandon ended up running into each other at a bowling alley in LA, where the baby swung on Danny's brother and was jumped by the baby's security. This obviously went viral and added to Danny's online embarrassment. In the duration of their three year on and off relationship, Danny didn't put her full focus into her career until after they were officially broken up. She really did lose herself and a piece of her public image within this relationship. She gained so much bad pick me press that she hasn't fully recovered in the public eye. I used like really what I want to ask you is like where are you at with that relationship? Cause like it's oh, hard, it's, right? Yeah, it's over. I know it sounds crazy, but I feel like it almost had to go there, like for me to let go. Why? I mean, maybe not had to go there, but you were in it. I was in it, like you were. Who knows if I would have like stayed if we weren't on live? Like I don't know, like. There had been so many chances that I gave, but now, like, I've just learned and grown so much that I'm just like, okay, I've just learned to love myself so much more. Because mm -hmm. I feel like I really did love him so much that I was just giving it all to him, all my focus. I didn't even focus on my career. The past two years, I haven't really done anything with my music or nothing. So, um, yeah, it's yeah. definitely over. She did release two EPs in 2020, but they didn't make as much noise. And in 2022 is when she was trying to make her official comeback with her Dead to Me and My Side EP. She did so many press tours and press runs, and with the controversy surrounding her name and the permanent stain on her image, things didn't necessarily take off the way they were supposed to. But people were starting to lighten up because they had sympathy for her situation. Things started to look brighter on the other side, but it didn't seem to last too long as months after both the EPs released, her public image took another dive. Danny Lay has this history of being slight towards black women, and sometimes I really want people to take the receipts and take someone who may be colorist or have some form of disdain for black women for face value. Just because Danny went through some issues with her baby daddy the baby in which she didn't necessarily deserve doesn't mean anything. If we can see the type of man the baby is by his receipts, let's see the type of girl Danny is by her receipts.
So we already see the issue, we already know the issue with the song Yellowbone. Now let's take into account what happened weeks before that trash ass song was dropped. Blue Toulouse is a Los Angeles based columnist, social justice advocate, and was a co-host on Hollywood Unlocked. She was doing an Afro-Latina panel with Danny Lay, who isn't black, and got some time to exchange some words with her. An Afro-Latina panel with Danny Lay several weeks before Yellowbone, and behind the scenes while they were doing mic checks and everything, we were talking about the Afro-Latin experience, and I don't know if she thought I was one of those I know black Dominicans, but she was real candid with me, and she told me directly to my face, I don't consider myself black, but I like black music and black men, and I wish black women weren't so jealous about it. She said it to my face. Mm -hmm. and, and then we had a conversation where I said, sis, I need you to never say that in public. And I tried to tell her that she needed more education around the Afro-Latin experience. A couple weeks later, that song comes out. I was like, oop, she didn't listen to me, right? So I know for a fact that Danny Lay does not consider herself black. If she's changing her story, I'm calling Cap because she said it to my face that she does not consider herself black, but she uses the N-word. I'm all for embracing cultures. Like, I really am. But when do you guys think we'll ever stop things like this from actually happening? Sincerely, because sometimes the disrespect is kind of uncanny. Watch my black erasure video if you want to hear my thoughts similar to this subject of how non-blacks or mixed are freely able to raid in black spaces in abundance, but this abundance allows for disrespect because people are easily able to claim blackness for beneficial use and to excel in their career folds. I'm not really too sure why Danny thinks black women are jealous of her, considering her one of her main supporters, but hey, whatever fiddles her diddle. This is Blue Toulouse. She's not a gossiper or a gossip blogger. She has a pretty long resume in the industry and is very credible. She has articles in the USA Today, BT, and Huffington Post, and has also made appearances on CNN. Why would someone of her stature lie on Miss Yellowbone? Cause she ain't. Then there was a situation with B. Simone and Danny. We know B. Simone had a crush on the baby, and she played on that by posting and talking about him to promote her manifestation book. But in the end, he chose Danny. Which made B. Simone post a video about Danny praising her looks on why he chose her. Shit, but here it fucking goes. This generation is so fucking stupid that y'all think if it trends, it's true. Y'all think I don't see the blogs in the fucking comments? I've been in the blogs all of 2020. Y'all want to know the truth? Y'all want to know what's really going on? Siri knows the truth. Siri, who is the baby's girlfriend? The baby's girlfriend is the world-renowned comedian B. Simone, <laughs> who always says baby girl. Here manifest it like, like... Thank System you. System glitching. It appears the baby's girlfriend is the thicker, what? the beautiful, uh -huh. the Dominican mommy, Danny Lay. Right, she cute, but... Would you like me to play the song Easy while you punch the air? Uh, bitch, I'm fine. So Danny was set to go on Wild and Out, and she requested as a guest to not have B. Simone on the same set as her. Basically request B. Simone to not be on the show if she was going to go on. You were supposed to appear on an episode of Wild and Out, and that another female guest persuaded producers to take you off the show. Mm -hmm. Is it true they took you off the show? You know what, I'm gonna answer that very simply. It is true, but we're gonna have grace for that situation. Mm -hmm. um, I don't agree with it, but I understand it, especially, you know, she's not that mature. So we're just gonna have grace for her and move forward. If I don't wanna be around somebody, it ain't no diva thing. It's just, hey, is it cool she's not on this episode? I don't think it was that deep. I'm sorry, like for real, I really wouldn't have did the episode if I would have known all of this would have came out of it. I'm just not gonna be around somebody that me and you don't clearly mess with each other. And it's just like, I feel like the devil just wants to follow me and just, I don't know, clown me. B. Simone did this Danny on a track calling her baby mama number three, which is reasonable, but if Danny felt like she was gonna be uncomfortable, then she shouldn't have went on the show that the girl you're supposedly beefing with is the main cast member. Or maybe request what was off limits to talk about, like her situation with the baby. But to request her off the show that she's on because you're the guest is very entitled because at the end of the day, that is her job. But it wouldn't be the last time that that happened. Danny got dragged by Kendra G for basically doing the same thing she did to be Simone for her interview on the Chicago radio show. Goopy ass person of the day award goes to Danny Lay. And let me tell you why. Danny Lay is in the city of Chicago. I don't know why. Probably got a high school parents. Who the hell knows? But she was set to do an interview with the morning show. And she requested that I, Kendra G, be removed from the interview because she was uncomfortable talking to me. Girlfriend, this ain't wildin' out. You ain't gonna be Simone me. <laughs> now your whole interview has been canceled. But I'm trying to figure out why didn't you wanna talk to me in the first place? I asked you on the radio defending your honor. I really felt the way when your baby daddy played you on that infamous IG live and I defended you on the radio. Now shout out to be Simone who I know in real life, rock with in real life, but I actually understood why you don't wanna do wild and out with her. But I'm still trying to figure out why the hell you ain't wanna talk to me. Now are you nervous when I ask you the questions that need to be asked? Like, are you still sitting with your baby daddy after you beat your brother up and played you on the IG live? And you know what? I probably would ask you that question because I need to know because if you forgave him, that means I need to forgive him.
Are you nervous I was going to bring up that whack-ass Jello Bone song? Girlfriend, I don't care. You can make a song about your skin tone and, and celebrate it. I love being a dark-skinned woman. Ain't no whack-ass song like that going to make me insecure about my complexion. Are you nervous that I was going to ask you, like, how did it feel to be a girlfriend thinking you was better than all the baby mamas just to become a baby mama and get treated worse? And you know what, D-Lay? I probably would have asked you all those questions because guess what? That's my job. That's what I do. I ask the questions that the people know. Maybe you should focus on your job, be in the studio and make a hit. And we got to talk about your music and not about your personal life. That's not my fault that your personal life is more relevant than your music. That's your fault. You're around here trying to get people removed from interviews. They don't go down like that. Now you miss out on an opportunity to have a radio interview on number one urban station in Chicago. And guess what? This opportunity might not come around again because your music ain't popping. So with that being said, sit your goofy ass down. Kendra blasted her on Twitter, which was unprofessional. But again, why are you going on a station where you don't feel comfortable with someone or you're scared they're going to ask you the tough questions? You don't request them off. You just don't show up. But the entire come together was definitely damage control and a waste of tea time. My favorite things out is we both were telling our truths. As in, she genuinely didn't know about the interviews. Her team genuinely conveyed that she did not want me a part of the interview, which then promote me to do that video and girl yeah. people are like I understand. No, I don't, I don't. They're like, I, 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 she ate me up though. I, I understand. I, I want to say that there's no joy in my heart and what that, that energy that the video brought to you. I don't have it's repetitive behavior and after this things have been quiet and she has been moving low-key in the industry she still gets jobs and opportunities and there hasn't been any real controversial issues attached to her for a while now she thrives in the dance category and that's where she's been making the most moves she has recently been credited for beyonce's renaissance tour where she helped choreograph some of her dances which is a huge accomplishment because it's beyonce Regardless, Danny started off as a dancer and that's where she'll always thrive in. The drama with the baby has simmered down as the baby's career has been on a severe decline in the past year. The most hurtful situation regarding their toxic relationship has to be Danny reflecting on how the baby has treated her publicly and how her daughter will possibly grow up being able to watch this treatment towards her mother. Because I don't want my baby to see that later on in life, but she'll grow to be her own person and be able to take things in. Yeah. What will so. you tell her about that day? About what was happening? Um, have you thought about that? I have thought about that, but it also, I feel like, just depends on the type of person she grows up to be. Like, the only responsibility I have is to, you know, just raise her to be a strong woman and mm. she'll feel how she feels. I feel like she's her own person, so. Danny has taken the public scrutiny and remained down low, but recently she was on the blogs again because she got arrested for driving under the influence. But this isn't just an ordinary DUI. According to the arrest report, around 12.50 a.m., Danny was weaving through traffic and hit a civilian riding a moped and didn't stop. It was so bad that Danny rode with the person for nearly a block while other drivers were trying to get her attention to stop the car. Some of the drivers even taken the initiative to call the cops. Eventually, she got pulled over and told officers she wasn't drinking nor did she hit a motorist, but she failed the sobriety test, reeked of alcohol, and officers found an open bottle of 1942 Don Helio in her car. The victim received spinal fractures and kidney lacerations. I'm all for people having fun and getting drunk and lit, but when it comes to drinking and driving, there's a lot of options out here to prevent something like this from actually happening. With the age of Uber, Lyft, and even taxis, there's literally no excuse, especially when someone's life is on the line. That man could have died. Danny was booked for a hit and run, then eventually released on 9,500 bond. There hasn't been any new information released regarding this new incident. Danny's career was really promising because she has dropped bobs and garnered herself a decent fan base, but Danny didn't solidify a good enough fan base. I think she has the capabilities to drop another hot single like she's done in the past, but considering her colorist commentary and reckless behavior with a DUI, the comeback could be a little harder, but not inevitable. In regards to hip-hop and R&B, there's no real colossal effort to not allow certain individuals to benefit from the perks of our genre, even if they disrespect us. In other words, no one gives a fuck. She didn't disrespect anybody but black women. And who really gives a fuck? There's no union and no effort to actually decide, okay, we're not going to listen to this person anymore or stop playing their music. Their bag will not be stopped at the expense of us, cause who cares? So her career has hit, but she will always have some buzz, but it will never reach the hierarchy of what it could have been. It will be very limited, but behind the scenes, she will always be fine. Thank you guys for tuning in and make sure you comment and subscribe. Let me know how you guys feel about this longevity video and if Danny's career will ever have the same impact. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. Thank you guys. Toodles.